All right. Well, it's so cool. nice to have you guys here. You're, you're a smaller group than our last group, and, and actually more compact together, which makes it easier to talk. <laughs> and we're not standing in front of, okay, good. So, um, as uh, when they introduced us, the, uh, this is Kendall Cassidy, so she's one of the doctoral interns. I'm Kelly Brown, and I'm the new director for Charles. And um, I want to—I do want to share the. Even though we're a small group, I want to share the information we shared with the other group, just because it's just why not have the information, right? Um, oh, we have a couple more people joining us. We got lost. Yeah. <laughs> you got lost. We did. We ah. did. Welcome, welcome. At least we're not as confusing as a whole brat versus Brent. That's true. <laughs> So we we're just introducing ourselves. What what sport are you all with? Women's crew. Women's crew. Cross okay. Country. And cross country. So we've got volleyball, crew, and cross country, and tr and track in general in the room. All right. I'm going to hold on to that. It's all very exciting. Um, so I was saying, I'm I'm Dr. Kelly Brown, and I'm the new director of Chaws. And um, I wanted to let you all know a little bit about my vision for Charles moving forward. My biggest goal is that I really want for Charles to be available and felt by every student on campus, whether or not that student ever walks in the doors. So I want, I want to make sure our center is visible, that you feel like you're getting something from our center, even if you never walk in the doors. And so the way I want to do that is for, by doing things like this today, where we're coming out and doing workshops, um, where we do the, um, the groups that we're doing, and so now we're doing the group for um, injured athletes. And if people start finding that you want more than that, then we'll start thinking about adding to that as well. Um, we're also increasing our social media presence. Um, I actually think we're starting our social media presence, but apparently, apparently we have a Facebook page. But we're trying to have more than that and be a little bit more active in that way. It doesn't seem to count anymore. It does just people like me, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, and then we are also starting a new um, thing. This a, a new product, I guess you call it. It's a. It's called Tau. And it is a self-help um, tool that will be online. And so students, faculty, staff, anyone can access Tau. And you can do things that will help with things like anxiety, depression, interpersonal relationships, pain management, um, substance use, you know, all of those kinds of things that will have things that you can click on, it'll have little videos, they're very interactive. So far, most students have told me that it is cheesy but fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, so far people are like, really cheesy, but I felt like doing more. So I we take that as a win. Um, this, it, it's available once we get it up. It's not up yet, but do keep your eyes open for it. But once we get it up, it will be available. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because it's online. And you can do it on your phone. So you can download the app, and, and it has meditation tools, and it has a mindfulness library, and you can just click on anything and kind of do it from there. So we're very excited about that. Um, now let me see, what I'm, let me not lose track. Last time I lost track, I just leaped into other things. <laughs> um, so today, let me move this along so that you guys can see what we bothered to pull together. Um, today we want to talk to you all about self-care tips and ways to get into what we call the flow state, and Kendall will talk more about that. And we want to give strategies to make sure that you can get into this flow state more frequently than not. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to talk to you about, um, you know, there are certain things that are typical for college students, and it's typical for college students to feel homesick, to have depression, anxiety, um, to have maybe eating problems or have issues with substances. Um, but athletes in particular also tend to, ha are more likely to experience perfectionism. Um, to have some difficulties with eating patterns, to have difficulty with balancing work, life, sports, the whole thing, and figuring out balance. 
and to be dealing with the stress and um, emotional and physical from injuries that can occur. And so our goal is to teach some self-care tips so that you can avoid some of those things. And I like to think of self-care as being kind of like a teapot. Um, when you have a teapot and you fill it up with water, you put it on the stove, you get life-sustaining tea or ramen, right? <laughs> so you, it, good things come from a full teapot on a hot burner. But if you take that same teapot and it is empty and you put it on the burner, you're likely to burn up the teapot. And if you're really unlucky, the whole house burns down. And I think of self-care as treating your bodies the same way, just like this teapot, that you need to keep it fueled or else you end up being burnt out and then you end up destroying your community around you. And so self-care is really important. I think self-care is a sign of strength. When I was younger, I thought self-care was for the pampered luxury. It was a luxury. And I learned I was wrong, that really in order to succeed at your sport, to succeed for me to get to work every day, to get academics done, you really have to be refilling and taking care of things. And so with that, we're going to leave, let Kendall talk about what happens when the pot runs low. Yeah, so I think, I'm hoping the strategies we talk about today are useful. My hope is that these are strategies to help you go into a flow state, and I'll explain what a flow state is. Um, have any of you heard of flow states before? A little bit? Okay, cool. Um, with that being said, though, yes, these are great self-care strategies, but there's times in which like, everybody experiences anxiety, everybody has periods of low mood, right? Like if I ask you all right now, have you felt anxious before? Show of hands, how many people have felt anxious before? It gets super common, right? But there's a point in which some of that becomes not normative anymore in which it might be kind of problematic. And so these self-care strategies are great, but if you are experiencing some of the things up on the board that I'm about to run through, just know that might be a time in which you might actually need a little bit of extra support. There's nothing wrong with that. We'll go over a slide at the end of some of those resources. But just knowing that there's a point in which just doing some deep breathing might not be quite enough to get you over that hurdle. So with that being said, I'm gonna go through a list of things that if you're experiencing this isn't like a hard fast rule, but if they're happening for about two weeks and they're happening most days of the week or longer than two weeks, that might be a time in which you need a little extra support. So the first one of those is mood. So if you notice a change in your mood, let's say all of a sudden you're kind of feeling down a lot or you do feel sort of anxious, you're worrying a lot more than usual, um, maybe honestly just feel kind of like pissy or irritable or even angry, and that's happening most days of the week and it's happening for about two weeks or longer, it might be slipping into something like anxiety or depression or something else, so it might not hurt to come and see somebody. Another is changes in appetite or weight. So all of a sudden you notice a big spike in weight, um, you drop a lot of weight, you are starving all the time, you never wanna eat and that's new for you, that might be a warning sign. Another is sleep. Um, it really shouldn't be taking you much longer. I think the average is about 30 minutes or less to fall asleep, uh, but everybody has their own rhythm. If all of a sudden you're noticing it's taking an hour to fall asleep, you're tossing and turning, you're sleeping 11 hours, which you still feel like crap after, that might be problematic. Social withdrawal. Anybody here identify as an introvert? All right, there's like a few more in the groups. Um, I think introversion is natural and normal. We all have that period where it's like, oh, it's super fun, but I need to go chill out by myself and kind of recharge. But if you find yourself doing that more often than not, where you're really pulling away from things you used to want to do, people you used to want to be around, it might be a warning sign as well. Uh, thoughts of suicide or self-harm. Definitely come and get some assistance for that. And then substance abuse. Um, there's nothing wrong with having a beer with friends, right? But if all of a sudden you feel like you need a beer at the end of the night to just stop the racing thoughts, or you find yourself reaching for the cannabis every night to be able to fall asleep, that might be a time in which the use is getting just a little bit problematic and you need a little extra support. And then all of these things, if you're noticing, are impacting daily functioning. So yes, we might go through stages where we're just not our best selves. We just feel a little pissy. We are hungry more than usual. But if all of a sudden it's impacting your school, your athletics, your friendships, that might be a concern. And so maybe reach out for some extra support. So with all that being said, we're gonna go through a few strategies of self-care. Um, the strategies we're gonna talk about are great to help decrease stress, uh, kind of minimize anxiety, but they're also some of the things that research has shown help us to slip into a flow state. So I'm going to describe a flow state and then I want you to see if this sounds familiar to you. So flow, sometimes people will describe it as being in the zone. It's when time almost ceases to exist. 
So after a flow state, you might come back out of it and realize, like, holy crap, it's been two hours. It feels like it was five minutes. Um, when you're in a flow state, you're literally, things are flowing right out of you. So you don't have to think about the step you take next, the move you make next. It's all just this rhythm. It all happens automatically. When I'm describing this, does this sound familiar to anybody? Yeah. So most people who experience the flow state, there's actually a ton of money going into flow research right now, especially within sports psych. Because what we find is when you're in a flow state, your brain is in its highest form of engagement that it can possibly obtain. And so what ends up happening is that the intake of information is being integrated with old information and things like creativity, problem solving goes through the roof. So you might find that it's actually your peak performance when you go into a flow state. You're able to integrate things you were taking from practice and you're able to implement it flawlessly on the field. And so with that being said, we're hoping the strategies that we'll talk about things like breathing, visualizations, mindfulness, um, all of those things are set to get your brain to stop thinking about what could happen, what maybe happened two plays ago, but rather how do you come into the moment, be fully engaged in that moment, and hopefully help you slip into a flow state. These are also just good strategies to, you know, you can do them before a test or when you're trying to fall asleep, so they're pretty versatile. Uh, last thing I want to say on flow state is some of the research does show that is it about skill and challenge. So you might find that you don't really slip into flow states during practice, but all of a sudden during a game when that ET is up just a little, 